Imagining the future of humanity, our planet, and everything we hold dear in our corner of the cold dark universe is typically the domain of science fiction, and we're usually only worried about the next few hundred years at best. But what about millions and millions of years from now? What will happen then? The world we enjoy today won't last this way forever. A number of terrestrial events are going to happen that will change things on our world. Sure, making Earth hardly recognizable to someone alive today. While the future can never be predicted with absolute certainty, present understanding in various scientific fields allows for the prediction of some far future events, if only in the broadest outline. Let's have a look at what science says will happen in one Google years from now. But before we jump into our time machine, make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be one of the first to watch our videos. Clothing could give people superhuman skills in the next 10 years. By 2030, the world will discover a clean energy breakthrough to power our world. This will transform the lives of millions of the poorest families. Virtual reality could replace textbooks during the next decade. Arctic sea ice might all disappear by 2037. When you think of the Arctic, you probably think ice and lots of it. That may well not be the case for much longer, as the Arctic could run out of sea ice within the next couple of decades. Countless jobs will be lost to automation. Over the next 20 years, warehouses and factories across the country are poised to replace human workers with automated robots. AI will be as smart as humans by 2040, smarter by 2060. In 2042, around the time the world reaches the population of 9 billion and the richest person will be a trillionaire, most people in the world will be far above the poverty line. We could live in a matrix-like virtual world by 2045. Advancements in nanotechnology will make it possible to plug our brains into computers and live in a simulated world. If we can link people's brains to computers, then we could use similar technology to turn people into part machine, part human. So people could also become cyborgs by 2045. Super tall buildings could function like many cities in the next 25 years. By 2049, over 50% of the Amazonian forest will be deforested and over 70% of the population will live in urban cities, so getting clean air will become a huge problem. Although there are plans to colonize Mars and the Moon by the mid to late 21st century, that would still be a small portion of the population and people will still need clean air to survive. We could rely entirely on renewable energy by the year 2049. Virtually anyone will be able to create their own pandemic. These bioterrorist viruses could be deployed by swarms of tiny drones that would be hard to spot until too late. Hurricanes could become more frequent and more severe. While climate change is best known for lifting sea levels and raising temperatures, it will also make storms far more intense. As the Earth heats up, more water vapor, the fuel for storms, will enter the atmosphere. This combination could make hurricanes up to 300% more powerful by 2100. By 2049, space will be a massive business in several industries. Space tourism will include short suborbital trips right up to lengthy stays in space hotels, and maybe on the moon, for the super rich at least. Meanwhile, asteroid mining will be underway, humans will be expanding into space rapidly. Privacy will become a thing of the past. We are rapidly approaching the era of ubiquitous surveillance, a time when virtually every aspect of our lives will be monitored. 100 years from now, in 2100, the human economic system has collapsed and the size of the economy is now a small fraction of what it had been at the beginning of the 21st century. Earth continues to heat up, possibly by as much as 10.8 degrees Fahrenheit from today's average temperature. Human population is down to 3 billion and falling. The rise in sea level caused by global warming has forced the abandonment of a large number of coastal cities. 
1,000 years from now. Thanks to ongoing human evolution, yes, we're still evolving, people of the year 3000 might be seven foot tall giants who can live for 120 years, according to some projections. 10,000 years from now, Planet Earth is still reeling from the wave of global warming that had started many thousands of years before. The atmosphere still contains large amounts of greenhouse gases generated by human activity and by the release of methane hydrates. Sea levels would rise 3 to 4 meters, one of the potential long-term effects of global warming. 15,000 years from now. The precession of Earth's poles will move the North African monsoon far enough north to convert the Sahara back into a tropical climate, as it was during 5 to 10,000 years ago. 25,000 years from now. The Chernobyl exclusion zone, the 1,000 square mile area of Ukraine and Belarus, left deserted by the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, will return to normal levels of radiation. The Arecibo message, a collection of radio data transmitted on 16 November 1974, reaches the distance of its destination, the globular cluster Messier 13. Any reply will take at least another 25,000 years from the time of its transmission. 100,000 years from now. The hypergiant star VY Canis Majoris will likely have exploded in a hypernova. There are about 20 known supervolcanoes on Earth, including a famous one under Yellowstone, and together they average a major eruption once every 100,000 years or so. At least one has probably erupted by now, releasing up to 100 cubic miles of magma, causing widespread death and destruction. 200,000 years from now. Due to the long-term movement of celestial bodies through space, Familiar star constellations like the Big Dipper, Orion, and Perseus no longer exist. 250,000 years from now. Lohi, a young submarine volcano in the Hawaiian chain, rises above the Pacific Ocean surface and becomes a new island. 500,000 years from now. Earth will likely have been hit by an asteroid of roughly one kilometer in diameter assuming it cannot be averted. One million years from now. Estimated shortest time by which humanity could colonize our Milky Way galaxy and become capable of harnessing all the energy of the galaxy. Current glass objects in the environment will be decomposed. Without maintenance, the Great Pyramid of Giza will erode into unrecognizability. Planet-sized computers dominate the local group. Humanity's descendants are a type 3 civilization on the Kardashev scale. Betelgeuse is a supernova. A number of alien intelligences have been contacted by now. In addition, ancient ruins have been undercovered on some worlds, indicating advanced civilizations that somehow failed or destroyed themselves in the distant past. Two million years from now. Estimated time for the recovery of coral reef ecosystems from human-caused ocean acidification. Pioneer 10 passes near the bright star Aldebaran. 10 million years from now, Earth is again the lush blue-green planet it used to be, full of life, animals, and forests. From the survivors of the great warming, a new explosion of life has been generated. There are again herbivores and carnivores, as well as large trees, even though none of them looks like the creatures which had populated the Earth before the catastrophe. In the tropical forests, the descendants of raccoons who crossed the Bering Land Bridge during the Great Ice Age are proliferating rapidly, expanding into empty ecological niches once filled by the larger primates. In another 30 million years or so, their descendants will come down from the trees. 25 million years from now. The movement of the San Andreas Fault will cause the Gulf of California to flood into the Central Valley. This will form a new inland sea on the west coast of North America. 50 million years from now. Maximum estimated time before the moon Phobos collides with Mars. 
the African continent merges with Europe, forming a new mountain range to rival the Himalayas. 100 million years from now, Earth will likely have been hit by an asteroid as big as the one that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. 110 million years from now, the rings of Saturn have disappeared. The sun's luminosity has increased by 1%. 180 million years from now, due to the gradual slowing down of Earth's rotation, a day on Earth will be one hour longer than it is today. All the continents on Earth may fuse into a supercontinent. Three potential arrangements of this configuration have been dubbed Amasia, Novopangaea, and Pangaea Ultima. 500 million years from now. Estimated time until a gamma ray burst or massive hyperenergetic supernova occurs within 6,500 light years of Earth close enough for its rays to affect Earth's ozone layer and potentially trigger a mass extinction. 750 million years from now. The death of most plant life will result in less oxygen in the atmosphere, allowing for more DNA damaging ultraviolet radiation to reach the surface. Many animals may be driven to the poles or possibly underground. Much of the land would become a barren desert and plants and animals would primarily be found in the oceans. Eventually, however, all multicellular life will die out. The only life left on the Earth after this will be single-celled organisms. 900 million years from now, our Sun and its solar system will have orbited four times around the entire Milky Way galaxy since the dawn of humanity. One billion years from now, Estimated lifespan of the two Voyager Golden Records before the information stored on them is rendered unrecoverable. If none of that gets us, the Sun will. Our home star bathes us in light and supplies the energy for almost all the life on Earth. But it won't be friendly forever. As we saw earlier, the Sun is gradually getting hotter. Eventually, it will be hot enough to evaporate all Earth's oceans and cause a runaway greenhouse effect that sends temperatures soaring upwards. As the seas and oceans begin to evaporate, the atmosphere is becoming laden with water vapor, creating an intense greenhouse effect. Only near the North and South Poles does vegetation flourish, and with it, the Earth's last intelligent species. 1.5 billion years from now, the Sun's rising luminosity causes its circumstellar habitable zone to move outwards as carbon dioxide rises in Mars' atmosphere. Its surface temperature rises to levels akin to Earth during the Ice Age. 2.3 billion years from now, the Earth's outer core freezes. If the inner core continues to grow at its current rate of one millimeter per year, without its liquid outer core, the Earth's magnetic field shuts down and charged particles emanating from the Sun gradually deplete the atmosphere. 2.5 billion years from now, the Sun will have reached a maximum surface temperature of 5,820 Kelvin. From then on, it will become gradually cooler while its luminosity will continue to increase. 2.8 billion years from now, Earth's surface temperature, even at the poles, reaches an average of 149 degrees Celsius. At this point, life, now reduced to unicellular colonies, is isolated. Scattered microenvironments, such as high altitude lakes or subsurface caves, will completely die out. Three billion years from now, there is a roughly 1 in 100,000 chance that the Earth might be ejected into interstellar space by a stellar encounter before this point, and a 1 in 3 million chance that it will then be captured by another star. Were this to happen, life, assuming it survived the interstellar journey, could potentially continue for far longer. 4 billion years from now, median point by which the Andromeda galaxy will have collided with the Milky Way 
which will thereafter merge to form a galaxy dubbed Milcomeda. The planets of the solar system are expected to be relatively unaffected by this collision. Seven and a half billion years from now, the Earth and Moon are very likely destroyed by falling into the Sun just before the Sun reaches the tip of its red giant phase and its maximum radius of 256 times the present day value. During this era, Saturn's moon, Titan, may reach surface temperatures necessary to support life. 10 billion years from now, the Sun has completed its red giant stage and may have destroyed the Earth. It's a white dwarf now, shrinking to nearly half of its current mass. All of the remaining planets freeze solid. The galaxy and the whole universe move slowly to extinction with the running down of the energy generated by the primeval Big Bang. 14 billion years from now, the Sun becomes a black dwarf. Its temperature and luminosity plummets, making it invisible to human eyes. Not that they exist anymore. 150 billion years from now, the universe's expansion causes all galaxies beyond the former Milky Way's local group to disappear beyond the cosmic light horizon, removing them from the observable universe. 450 billion years from now, median point by which the circa 47 galaxies of the local group will coalesce into a single large galaxy. One trillion years from now, Estimated time until the universe ends via the Big Crunch, assuming a closed model. Depending on how long the expansion phase is, the events in the contraction phase will happen in the reverse order. Galaxy superclusters would first merge, followed by galaxy clusters and then later galaxies. Eventually, stars have become so close together that they will begin to collide with each other. Minutes before the Big Crunch, the temperature will be so great that atomic nuclei will disband and the particles will be sucked up by already coalescing black holes. Finally, all the black holes in the universe will merge into one singular black hole containing all the matter in the universe, which would then devour the universe, including itself. After this, it is possible that a new Big Bang would follow and create a new universe. One quadrillion years from now, the stellar landscape is dominated by white dwarfs and brown dwarfs. Much of the remaining mass of the universe is comprised of neutron stars and black holes of various sizes. Most other stars in the galaxies have long since collided explosively or gradually burnt out. Frozen corpses of planets scatter across the galaxies and the halos around galaxies and the deep night of intergalactic space. The stars of this era are more and more thoroughly fueled by dark matter, whose properties we don't know well enough now to describe. New life may still form inside cooling brown dwarfs and on the crusts of cold white dwarfs. It isn't likely that humans will exist by then. What to speak of the Earth, the Sun, or even what remains of Andromeda and Milky Way. 100 quintillion years from now, the Earth collides with the black dwarf Sun due to the decay of its orbit via emission of gravitational radiation. If the Earth is not ejected from its orbit by a stellar encounter or engulfed by the Sun during its red giant phase. Three tredecillion years from now, the year is 30 followed by 42 zeros of our era. Estimated time for all nucleons in the observable universe to decay. By this time, if protons do decay, the black hole era, in which black holes are the only remaining celestial objects, begins. Six duo vigintillion years from now. Estimated time until a stellar mass black hole with a mass of three solar masses decays into subatomic particles by the Hawking process. One Google years from now. The year is 10 followed by 100 zeros. Estimated time until a supermassive black hole with a mass of 20 trillion solar masses decays by the Hawking process. This marks the end of the black hole era. 
Eventually, matter itself is expected to come under the influence of radioactive decay, as even the most stable materials break apart into subatomic particles. The universe enters the dark era, in which all physical objects have decayed to subatomic particles, gradually winding down to their final energy state in the heat death of the universe. It's always wise to look ahead, but difficult to look further than you can see. What do you think? We'd like to hear your opinion in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe.